Welcome to the channel. I'm Oshin. This is Ethan. We're solution engineers at Prisma Technologies. And today we're looking over the Matrice 400. This is a first look. All right, Ethan, let's have a look. Let's take a look. Okay, Shane, it's all unboxed. Uh, let's get Rav, our in-house specialist here at Prisma Technologies, to go further through this DJI system. Hey Rav, hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. All right, now that me and Ethan have unpacked this here, yep. I can see that there's a fair few differences in the 400 here compared to the previous 350. Yep. Do you mind going over what those are? There's quite a fair bit to unpack. This is DJI's new enterprise flagship drone, so it's packed with enormous amount of features. The way I see this drone, um, having worked with DJI products for a long period of time, this is a bit of a fusion of the Matrice 600 and the Matrice 350 with some additional smarts built in. The reason why I hearken back to the Matrice 600 drone is because that had a six kilogram payload. So does this, right? That's a massive Impressive. step up from the 2.7 kilogram payload from the Matrice 350 drone. That allows us to now carry seven total payloads. You could have a dual downward gimbal mount and you can have a third gimbal mount facing downwards at the bottom part of the aircraft there, in addition to some e-port mounts as well. This currently supports all new DJI Zenmuse payloads, such as the DJI Zenmuse S1, V1, the H30 series, the P1, and the L2. That's quite an impressive payload capacity there. Now, I know with the 350, it did have a 55 minute flight time without a payload. Yep. What are we looking at for the flight time here with or without a payload? Bigger payload capacity requires a bigger battery, right? So we've got a 977 watt hour battery on board. So while you're carrying, say, the DJI Zenmuse H30T, you can still attain 59 minutes of straight line flight. We'll have to obviously put that through the paces ourselves just to make sure that that tracks. With the 300 and 350 series before this, we did have the dual battery system that allowed you to hot swap the batteries when the aircraft landed that prevented you from having to turn off the drone and then turn it back on after a battery swap which does a very convenient feature it allows the drone to go back up in the air as quickly as possible you can still hot swap this battery even though it's a single battery system when you pull up the battery from the aircraft there is an internal capacitor that will keep the gnss system powered up for 45 seconds so you have a 45 second window to be able to swap in a fresh battery so if you can do that like a ninja within 45 seconds you'll be back up in the air very quickly yeah. we now also have the bs100 battery charging station and this doubles up as a carrying case for your batteries. It can carry three TB100 flight batteries in it. It has two charging modes, a rapid charge mode that will charge your battery from zero to 90% within 45 minutes, or you could use silent mode to charge your batteries, which will take 110 minutes to charge your batteries from zero to 100%. I can see that they've redesigned the battery there, going from two to one now. I can also see a few other things different with the airframe, including, is that a LiDAR up there? Yeah, so that's a horizontal rotating LiDAR. It excels at long range and it detects very small objects. It's ideal for picking up pile lines at a bit of a distance, which is supplemented by the drone's augmented reality system that will notify you of an oncoming power line. We've also got millimeter wave radar on the aircraft as well. So there's built-in radar into the front shell of the aircraft there and then on the arms. We've also got uh, omnidirectional fish eye full color obstacle detection cameras. Right, so all these systems work in tandem to be able to detect obstacles and provide you additional safety even in low light conditions because we now have millimeter wave radar as well as LiDAR to supplement those darker scenes. So you've got 24 seven detection from obstacles. They also supplement the visioning positioning of the aircraft in GPS denied environment. So you said that the omnidirectional vision sensors are all in color now, right? Does that mean we can see through them in color? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you might notice is at the front of the aircraft, we no longer have an FPV camera, like a dedicated FPV camera. On the front shell of the Matrice 350, we had a noticeable FPV camera in addition to vision positioning cameras as well. On the Matrice 400 though, we've got the FPV camera, which is also a vision positioning system. All right, so they've improved the obstacle detection system on board and they've increased the flight time. Have they done anything to increase the range? 
Yes, they have. This drone now operates on the Sub 2G transmission system, which operates on a lower frequency that gives it broader range, more penetration as well. The FCC range for this aircraft is 40 kilometers or, or 20 kilometers in CE standard. The uh, Matrice 400 can also be used as a relay. So if you're using two drones, for example, two Matrice 400s, you could use Matrice 400A as a relay. That's passing on the signal from your remote controller over to Matrice 400 number two. We've seen with some of the recent DJI products that have included a protection rating. Does this follow that trend? Yeah, like the Matrice 4D and the Matrice 350 before it, this does have an IP55 rating and an operating temperature range of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. That sounds like quite a robust platform there. What else can you tell me about the reliability and safety of this drone? Yeah, so we've got the arm lock sensors built in as well now, which follows from the Matrice 350 drone. And we've got a battery lock sensor as well. We've got anti-collision beacons on the sides of the drone there. I don't know if you can see them, there's one on each side. We've also got a three propeller emergency landing system and a built-in ADSB receiver. All right, well, moving on from that there, I know that with the Matrice 4 series, they've included some impressive artificial intelligence features. Are those found on this model as well? Yeah, so when you're utilizing the H30 series of cameras, you can use those cameras to count people, vehicles, as well as vessels. One of the more interesting features that they've introduced with the H30T is that you can use its infrared camera to be able to do the same. All right, so I can see that the 400 here carries over those impressive artificial intelligence features on the Matrice 4 series. Does it have any of the other similar smart features on the model? Yeah, there's a number of intelligent features in this drone, such as fly to, point of interest, observe view, smart track, AI spot check. The M400 also supports ship-based takeoff and auto landing. There's new flight route planning modes on DJI Pilot 2 that include slope and geometric route and smart 3D capture with the Xenius P1. All right, that's a wrap on our little overview of this model. We'll be sure to do a deep dive on it a little bit later, going into more details. But just before we fly on out, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to leave them down below and we're sure to answer them. See ya.